Hey guys, what's happening? So for this one, I want to take it back quite a bit and talk about a couple of times where Ant-Man went into the microverse to save the Fantastic Four. And so if you have not seen Ant-Man and the Wasp yet, there are definitely some spoiler references in this video. So I just want to put that out there, give you the heads up. And of course the Fantastic Four part isn't. Like that part in no way is any kind of spoiler. But pretty much everything else in this video kinda is. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is actually with Hank Pym, who was Ant-Man at the time, and then the second one's gonna be with Scott Lang. But before we even hop into that, the microverse or micro world, which is also referred to at times as Subatomica, it's also the equivalent to your quantum realm in the MCU films. Because in the comics where characters would go subatomic, this is where they would actually appear. And we actually find out in earlier issues of the Fantastic Four in their first volume back in 1961 that in this microverse that there's a whole nother universe inside here, which is also referred to as inner space, a lot like what we refer to beyond our planets and stars as outer space. But with the Fantastic Four, the way that they discovered this is when Doom, posing as Reed Richards, creates a shrinking ray which would shrink the Fantastic Four down to a smaller size and bring them back up to their regular size, not necessarily to enhance their powers but more so to refine them. Because this would give Sue, Johnny, and Ben better control over their abilities. And like for Sue, this improvement showed that she could make certain parts of her body invisible instead of her entire body. And she would also be able to sustain that state for as long as she needed to. And for Johnny, he could hold his flame longer and fly faster. And for Ben, he could actually transform back into human form and then turn into the thing whenever he wanted to. And that was at least the idea that this Doom in Disguise had sold to the team. So now, prior to this experiment, the Fantastic Four had believed that Doctor Doom was dead. And this was earlier on around like the sixth issue where Namor teamed up with Doctor Doom in a plot to use this large like magnetic ship and pull the Baxter building up out of the earth and into the sun. Because if you can't beat them, just take their whole building and throw it into the sun. <laughs> but as it turned out, Doom had double crossed Namor because Namor was still in the building. So Namor's like, bump that, I'm switching sides, let me borrow this oxygen helmet so I can go after Doom. But on Doom's ship, the door he was locked behind was protected by an electrical charge, presumably to keep Doom safe inside of the pilot's cabin. But what Doom wasn't aware of is that much like an electric eel, Namor can absorb the charge and then send it back. But let me tell you guys something real quick. Like, even in the early days, Namor and his character has been around for like 20 years at this point, so there have been some changes. But when Namor sent that charge back, like he was straight trying to kill this dude. And that's something we've seen very consistent over the years. Switch sides, murder. <laughs> and not always necessarily in that order. But when he double crosses Doom who double crossed him, this forces Doom to eject from the cabin where he gets hit by a meteor. And really that's just common sense man, cause when you jump out of a spaceship you need to look both ways. Because meteors don't be paying no kind of attention at all, they just going wherever they going. But as a result, Namor saved the Fantastic Four from imminent death that he was partially responsible for. But the Fantastic Four they really don't care, they just take the win anyway. But somewhere around like 10 issues later, Doctor Doom comes back with the plot to threaten Stan Lee and Jack Kirby into luring Reed Richards into a trap. And he did this because he knew that they had a close relationship with the Fantastic Four and they wrote comics on their different adventures. So he threatened them to call Reed Richards and tell him to come over but don't tell him why. And it actually works because Reed buys into it and he comes through, then Doom shoots him with his gas gun and teleports him back to his lair. And when Doom does this, we find out what happened to him after he got hit by that meteor. Because after riding on that meteor's trajectory, he runs into this alien race called the Ovioids. And when Doom meets them, he finds out that they have phenomenal telekinetic abilities. But on top of that, they also have the technology to transfer a mind into a different body. Because that's what they would do at their time of death. Instead, they would transfer their minds into a new body, and that way they would just practically live forever. And so Doom, being Dr. Doom, forced them to teach him how to do that. And he didn't really care so much for the lifting with the mind kind of thing, he more so wanted the technology of transferring the mind into a different body. Because he had planned to use that against Reed Richards by luring him in and then infiltrating the Fantastic Four. And so this is how the real Doctor Doom persuaded the team to partake in this experiment. And once he gained their trust, his plans were to pretty much just start shrinking people into nothing. 
but when Reed Richards got out and confronted the Fantastic Four, it didn't take long till they figured out who was the real Doctor Doom. And when they found out, it caught the original Doctor Doom off guard and Reed Richards was able to get his original body back. And with Reed getting his body back and Doom really just stuck standing there in the middle of the Baxter building, Doom began to defend himself so he can get away. And when Reed dodged his blast, he ended up hitting the button on his shrinking ray, which was already designed to shrink the members of the Fantastic Four. And it blasted Doom and he started to shrink indefinitely. And this really takes me back to that scene in Ant-Man and the Wasp. And even though Scott had on that, uh, the, the blue hoodie when he went inside a little elementary school or whatever, <laughs> like had it been green, like that just would have made my day. But when Doom gets hit, he's like, man, Reed, fix this. You got like two seconds. And for whatever reason, Reed Richards couldn't find a solution in like three seconds. So Doom just disappeared or so it seemed. But what actually happened is Doom was shrunk down into the microverse, but while the Fantastic Four is here on Earth, they start randomly shrinking. But not subatomic, just only to a smaller size. And this happened to each one of them individually, but when it happened collectively, Reed Richards figured, okay, something's not right. And that's when he decided to reach out to the shrinking expert, which was Ant-Man, who was Hank Pym at this time. And when Hank came by, before he left, he agreed to leave them some of his shrinking formula, giving them solutions whether they needed to shrink or grow back to normal size. So this way, if they were to shrink again, they wouldn't be stuck. They just take the solution and they can grow back to the regular size. But with this randomly happening, they also got these warnings about Dr. Doom saying that they should beware of Doom and that the random shrinking thing was just the beginning. And so what they did is they decided to investigate using the shrinking formula to shrink them down to size and portions of the growing formula to slow down their shrinking. And this is where they discovered that Doom had taken over Micro World. And this was really Doom's plan all along because when they got down there he was just waiting for them and shrinking them to a subatomic size and then imprisoning them pretty much making them slaves in the microverse like that was really his plan after he had got down there because since doom had went subatomic he had conquered the world of Mirwood by gaining their trust becoming their lead scientist and that's how he got the resources to create the shrinking ray to attempt to lure in the fantastic four and he had also used that same ray to shrink the king and his daughter pirla either pirla or perla one of those but after imprisoning them and taking over he had then planned to take the Fantastic Four and give them over as slaves to the lizard men of talk, which really had them shook just at the idea of it. But the thing is, back on Earth, since Ant-Man didn't hear anything back from Reed Richards, he went on his own to go and investigate. And after arriving at the empty Baxter building, he then gained the suspicion that the Fantastic Four had entered Subatomica, or Micro World. And because of that, he goes after them. And much like the Fantastic Four, when he first gets there, he's apprehended. <laughs> like, man, they just waiting at the door to arrest somebody. <laughs> it's crazy. But Ant-Man, he doesn't get locked up like the Fantastic Four and the King and his daughter. Because before they can lock him away, Sue figures out a way to get the team, the king and his daughter, out of their miniature holding cell, which was like in the middle of like this little pool of acid. And when they get out, they use Doom's ray to make themselves a little bit larger and untie Ant-Man, who at the time was occupying Doom, and together they overthrow Doom's army. And when Sue went invisible and untied Ant-Man, first Doom had thought that Ant-Man had just gotten free. But when he figured out that Sue Storm was the one that loosened his restraints, at that point he knew that, okay, the rest of the Fantastic Four is free and I gotta get up out of here. And as a result, he used the enlarging ray to flee from Ant-Man and the Fantastic Four going back to Earth. And after that, the King and his daughter were back in power and the Fantastic Four and Ant-Man used the same enlarging ray to return back to Earth as well. And I was just thinking, man, like imagine with the post credits of Ant-Man and the Wasp, if Ant-Man in the microverse or in the quantum realm were to come across this city and in this city, Doom was already there, the Fantastic Four was already there, and Scott Lang were to actually help them escape. But while meeting them also find out that they're from an alternate reality. And I'm sure we're not really gonna get this like at all, but it's nice to hope or dream. But if they did, it would have to be like teased in a post Captain Marvel film or possibly at the beginning of Avengers 4 where they would send Ant-Man back and then he'd be like, okay, well, I will come back for you because I definitely feel like in the MCU, we're gonna see a bit more explaining with the quantum realm, how Janet Van Dyne got the clothes that Hank Pym found her in, what she had been doing all this time, how did she eat, where did she take shelter, how did she know what a time vortex was without actually falling into one. And a lot of that stuff we will dive into a bit more in another video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But another reason why I feel like the MCU is gonna explore this a bit more is because there are images online where people have uploaded screenshots of where 
Hank Pym went to get Janet out of the quantum realm and there are different images of what appears to be a city that you'll only see for like a few seconds like as they're leaving. And I really feel like much like a lot of things at the MCU like that was intentionally planted so it could be revisited later on. But either way, the second time I want to talk about is with Scott Lang. And this time appeared in the Marvel 2-in-1, which is more like their team up, because this time it was really just the thing that had got sent to the microverse. And Scott Lang went in to save him. And the way it's set up kind of reminds me a little bit of Thor Ragnarok. And this ain't really like your contest of champions. And it's kind of like the opposite of the Hulk, because Thing was pretty much sent here to be killed. <laughs> like he was sent to battle this dude just so he could be like destroyed. <laughs> but the way that this happened, Reed Richards... <laughs> was doing an experiment and with doing this experiment he wanted to manipulate the density of a particular object and with doing this he believed he came up with a specific type of metal in which he could electromagnetically change its density and that's why he wanted thing to hold it so it's kind of like let me know this is getting too heavy so the thing he agreed to help but later on when he was dumping out a backwood i mean not exactly but had he had a little more time who knows but not long after that experiment the thing he shrinks until he just completely disappears and so when this happens it reminds reed richards of way back of what happened with dr doom in the microverse and everything so once again he's like okay let me call ant-man but this time or at this point scott lang is currently ant-man because hank pym at this time had become yellow jacket so they kind of figured okay we're not gonna bother him he's in villain mode right now and so at the time they reach out to Scott Lang, he's getting on his daughter Cassie's case, telling her she needs to clean up her room. And if she doesn't, she won't be able to go out with a couple of her friends to the movies. But when he sees the ants come through the window, he knows something's up, so he gotta go. So he allows Cassie to go to the movies with her friends, and he just calls his sister Ruth to look after them. And so when Scott Lang gets to the Baxter building to talk to Reed Richards, Reed catches him up on everything that's previously happened and how the thing got shrunk down. And for Scott Lang, this was actually his first time going into the microverse. And initially he was a bit hesitant about it, but when Reed Richards explained to him the situation and that the thing, his life was in danger, he agreed to it and he said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> but when he gets there, <laughs> the thing is just living it up even though ben doesn't really realize that he's a prisoner mainly because while he's there they're just treating him so well but as a result he finds out that ben was summoned here by perla the ruler of subatomica because zorak the leader of the lizard men wanted to make perla his wife but lizard men really ain't her type so she wasn't really digging that and so her plan was to use ben to battle zorak for her hand in marriage and during that fight she would invade talk because at that point their champion would be out of the picture and so when Ant-Man figured this out, he was like, okay, I'm not just gonna let y'all set up Ben for the okie doke. So while down there, he found some ant-like creatures that he could communicate to, much like the ones up here on Earth, and took a swarm of them to go help Ben in the arena. Pretty much saving Ben's life, cause I'm pretty sure he would've caught the business from old boy. Like for real, I really believe that Zorak was about to just chop him down with the Thor Ragnarok music in the background and everything. But speaking of Thor Ragnarok, the thing actually wins the same exact way that Hulk won. Because just before it was over, Zorak gets zapped, giving Ben the opportunity to get the upper hand. And that's how he takes Zorak down and leaves with Ant-Man in order to stop the invasion of Talk, which was really what this entire battle was set up to be a cover up for. And in the process of stopping the invasion, they destroyed a bunch of Perla ships so they couldn't fly out there to actually carry out the invasion. And then on the other hand, they separated their ground support so they wouldn't have any time to come stop them from stopping them. <laughs> but essentially when they figured out the plan, they ended the fight and stopped the invasion. They forced Perla and Zorak to sign a peace treaty restricting the two of them from going back to war. And really, that was that. But let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comments. With the whole idea of Ant-Man going to the quantum realm and coming back with either a member of the Fantastic Four or the whole team. And even though I really don't think it will happen, I would love to see them come back either in the Captain Marvel film and fight some scrolls, possibly appearing in the 90s, or even appearing in Avengers 4 a few years after Infinity War. But let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments and we'll do it again on the next one. Alright, later.